People say good things come in pairs. In our solar system, Saturn is right next to Jupiter, our largest planet. And then Neptune is 31,000 miles across, while the companion Uranus is 32,000 miles across. Although Neptune has a bigger body mass. Of course, we can forget Earth and Venus. Venus is 30% closer to the Sun and is the closest planet to the Earth. Venus is called Earth's twin because it is 90% the size of Earth. We both are made of similar material with similar mass. Of course, Earth is a paradise and Venus is like hell. But like the good and evil twin, we are stuck together and will never be apart. Of course, you may ask, what about Mercury? Some scientists said it is an escape moon of Venus. Well, our moon is 1,079 miles across, while Mercury is 1,516 miles across. So it is not an impossible theory. Although scientists have long wondered how a small planet like Earth won the big heart of a huge moon. So how can an even smaller planet like Venus have an even bigger moon like Mercury? Well, that is why Mercury ditched Venus and went to orbit around the Sun. But how about Mars? Some scientists have said Mars is an escaped moon from Jupiter. Well, Mars is 4,212 miles in diameter, while Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede, is 1,637 miles across. We know when kids grow up, they will leave home and start their own journeys. But I don't know if that trend applies to planets and moons. Obviously, I'm not the only one with such doubts. So there is another theory. The theory goes like this. There was another Mars-sized planet. Somehow, something happened to it, and it blew into a million pieces, forming the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. The largest one, Ceres, is 587 miles across. Ceres contains one-third the mass of the entire asteroid belt. This not only made it the 33rd largest object inside Neptune's orbit, but also give us an idea about how big is the supposed Mars twin. If we piece together all objects, Ceres will only increase less than 50% in diameter, which will make it a moon-sized object rather than a planet-sized object. But rocks just flow away and can never be accounted for. So, I'll say that's an interesting theory, but it is an interesting theory we can probably never find proof for. No matter how Mars was formed, we can't deny the fact that it is our second closest neighboring planet and may hold the best chance for alien life because it is in the so-called conservative habitable zone. Even though Venus is much closer to us, it lies outside the optimistic habitable zone. And we have confirmed water on Mars. Even liquid water is now confirmed despite a prior denial on some very clear pictorial evidence. And many scientists believe that evidence pointed to some Mars nuclear disasters long ago. Don't believe me? Search for yourself. Ancient Martians murdered by nuclear bomb-dropping aliens. Mars mushroom cloud proof alien life wiped out. Wow, so many articles, I don't even know where to start. So I checked on this article by J.E. Brandenburg from 2014. It is posted on a university site with pictures and analysis done by someone who knows what they're talking about. That information was released in recent years. However, the CIA may know something we don't a while back revealed in declassified CIA documents details of Mars exploration. A remote viewing project conducted on May 22, 1984. I know how unbelievable this may sound. Search yourself. 
and you will know I'm not kidding. To summarize, the CIA conducted several experimental programs using psychics during Cold Wars. The so-called MK Ultra used mind control drugs to interrogate. One project planned to use LSD to turn humans into robot agents. When the information about the projects leaked out, the cover-up began and most of us were kept out of it. Another project called Stargate, which involved astral projection and remote viewing. Even before hearing about the CIA's astral projection projects, I watched some YouTube videos and read some articles. The project sounded fascinating but it is hard to tell if the images you see are real, are an illusion. According to CIA documents, the psychic, McMonagall, reported seeing roads, buildings, pyramids, and canals. He met with Martians, who were on the brink of apocalypse. Some members were sent to find new homes, while many others hibernated so they could wait for help to arrive. When I first watched it, two questions immediately popped into my head. First, if this project is really like some CIA have stated, a totally useless experiment, why did they keep it under seal for so long? I mean, since 1984? Hmm. Second, why do they need to look for a new home? Isn't Earth just a stone's throw away? But then I started to think, moving billions of Martians to Earth could be a logistic challenge, to say the least. Plus, now we know several of Jupiter's moons may be habitable also. So maybe the Earth is not the only choice. Or there's another possibility. Depending on the reason the Martians had to desert Mars, they could go underground or move up. Do you know Phobos is only 3,716 miles from the Mars surface? Did you know it is 4,000 miles from Anchorage to Miami? So now compare Phobos to Mars with a distance from the moon to the Earth at 238,900 miles. There is no other moons in our solar system this close to their planet. Doesn't that make you think? Who put Phobos there? Hmm. Phobos is only 27 by 22 by 18 kilometers. Its composition is consistent with Class C asteroids from the asteroid belt, but its orbit is not. If the Martians needed to escape an alien nuclear attack, Phobos would not be a bad place to hide. It is far enough away to not be destroyed, but close enough to move back when the dust settles, right? I love space news, but I'm often turned away from the words and phrases I can't understand. How can you love a girl if you don't understand her? Well, I hope you find these Martian facts interesting and easy to understand. And let's explore Mars and find out what really happened there. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.